Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. One of the most common questions I get is, how do you hear problems in the mix? Is that something you can learn? And the answer is yes, absolutely. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the one tip that I think will transform your ability to hear problems in the mix. And then at the end, I will share with you audio examples so you can hear it for yourself. The number one tip, saturate yourself in the good stuff. Imagine that I wanna be a world famous Italian chef but all I ever eat are $5 frozen pizzas. World-class chefs will travel to places like Italy and France to immerse themselves in the good stuff in order to develop both their palate and their skill set. And you can't have greatness without both. It's the difference between only knowing a bunch of mixing techniques, which is skill set, and being able to truly recognize what makes a great mix great, which is the palate. People say guitar tone is in the fingers, but I disagree. I think guitar tone is up here, like from the neck up. Great guitar players know good tone when they hear it, and they can dial it in quickly. Why? Because they've saturated themselves in the good stuff. They've listened to countless hours of great guitarists with great tone, and now they can recognize it. Here's a quote from one of my favorites, Zig Ziglar. You can't hit a target you cannot see, and you cannot see a target you do not have. If you don't know what a good mix sounds like sitting in your studio, coming out of your speakers, then how can you possibly expect to create your own good mix? If it sounds like what I'm asking you to do is a lot of sitting down and listening to music, I kind of am. But if you do it enough and you really analyze and listen intently, you'll start to develop an ear for it. And that will translate into... You've listened to so many great mixes plopped down right here in your studio, listening on your speakers or your headphones or whatever you use to mix. That's hugely important. That when you hear your drums against all the drums you have embedded into your memory, you'll think, oh, well, my drums don't sound like that. Mine sound like this, but those drums sound like that. Now I'm going to use all the skills and techniques that I've learned to take them from here to there. But do you understand how only learning the skills and techniques of how to use things like EQ compression effects only gets you so far if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know the end result that you desire, then what happens? You're just randomly turning knobs and trying techniques without a clear goal in mind. As promised, let's listen to a couple of examples of how I listened to the raw tracks versus how the finished mix turned out. Here's my song, Fighter. Here's the last chorus at the end of the song, instrumental. Let's listen specifically to the drums and let's turn off all the plugins. Here's what the raw drum tracks sound like. Pretty good, balance is good. I like the roominess of it, but there's not much clarity, right? There's not a lot of depth in the low end and I'm not really hearing the cymbals as well as I would like. This is all an EQ thing. So I heard this, and so by using things like EQ and compression, I'm able to take out some of the extra mid-range that's there and give a little extra presence on the top end so that it sounds nice and bright. Why would I do that? Because when I listen to especially independent releases of stuff coming out of Nashville, that's the kind of drum sound that I'm hearing. It's got some punch, it's got some depth, but it's also got some crispiness in the top end. So here is what the drums sound like raw. And here's what they sound like with the plugins. For me, the problems that I was hearing were in that kind of lower mid-range. There was too much there. Took that out, cleaned it, tightened it up, and gave it a nice, bright, tight sound. Now, you listen to that by yourself, and you think, oh, it's not as big and punchy as I want it to be. Listen to it in context of the whole mix, and it works. Let's do the same thing with bass. Here's the bass guitar as we recorded it. And here come the plugins. I will tell you 100%, when I listen to just the raw bass track, it sounds way better to me. I like that sound. There's so much mid-range. It's gorgeous. In the mix, however, it takes over the low mids and makes the whole mix sound muddy. I listen to it, and about 30 seconds in, I get a headache. With this setup, with these sounds here, 
I've got that deep low end, boom, 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 and I've also got some of that crispiness and the distortion in the top end that's allowing me to hear that over everything else that's happening in the mix. Remember, what happens in the mix is what matters, not what it sounds like by itself. And these are the tones I'm used to hearing in professional releases that I listen to here. There's big bass, but it doesn't have a ton of mid-range. It's got more deep low end and a little bit of crispiness on top. So here's the bass with just the drums. And then here's everything. Bass is just holding down that low end. Final example, I love to use background vocals in my mixes. Here's kind of the looping background vocal part that I came up with. Here's how it sounds recorded. Now, a lot of folks listen to that and they say, oh, that's nice, it's kind of a cappella. it's full, it's warm, it has all the frequencies. Don't care. When I listen to background vocals in any genre of music just about, they, have, they don't have the thick low end. They're bright, they're airy, they're crispy. They support the vocal without muddying up the mid-range. That's what I hear. Ergo, that's what I did with plugins, mostly just EQ and reverb to get this. Sounds a little too thin by itself. It's, are you seeing the theme now? But in the mix, it sounds like the stuff I hear on a lot of my favorite records. I hope this was helpful for you, both from a conceptual standpoint and also from a, okay, so that's big picture, kind of the before and after look at what mixing does. Now, there are thousands of decisions to make between the raw tracks and the final tracks. I totally get that. But hopefully this sets you on a path to making better decisions and to getting to better mixes more quickly. If you don't have a mixing process and you'd like one that'll help you get from start to finish with a little more, a little less pulling out of the hair, <laughs> which I don't have, check out my free five-step mixing guide at fivestepmix.com. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.